In this section, we're going to talk about the basics of automation with the icon. Uh, when you create new tracks in Pro Tools, you basically default to read mode automation. We're going to roll the transport here just for a second, and you can see that in read mode, our faders are uh, flexible to move. They're basically in virgin territory. There's no automation to fight or create it. So you don't really have to start in an automation off mode. Once we're ready to commit to some level of automation, most people would start in write mode. So in order to put the entire console in write mode quickly, we're going to use these automation global mode controllers down here in the global channel strip master. And we'll hold the option key as a do to all and hit write. So now that every channel is blinking in the automation write mode. And you can do that with any of the automation modes by holding the option key or using the global do to all to switch the whole console uh, into that particular automation mode. Great. So at this point, we should probably talk about what things you can automate in Pro Tools and with the icon. Right. And that would be visible up here in the automation enable area. So you could see we have volume, send volume, pan, send pan, and send mute are blinking at the moment. Mute is not lit up, and inserts is lit up, but not blinking. All right, so in the case of the mute button not being lit up there, what we are doing with that is typically we don't like to write mutes on the console or cuts. It's very hard to see uh, where those things are coming because there's nothing to move. So we typically like to actually go into the Pro Tools system, find the audio that you might want to mute, and just mute the region. Let's do that. In fact, we actually have a part, we've got some vocals at the front of the intro that we just don't really want to use right now. So we're going to select over those and use our... Um, Explode, Explode key. And those regions are selected. I can hit Apple M, and quickly you see the regions gray out. They're now muted, and we will not be hearing those things. Hit the E key again to get back out of our Zoom toggle mode, and now we are back and ready to start automating. Now, the insert light is not blinking, but it's lit. Okay, and that means that uh, essentially any of the plugins on the inserts are not automate enabled. Okay, and so basically what you're saying is in Pro Tools, uh, when you instantiate a plugin, uh, typically they come up with none of the parameters set to automate. Now, what you typically would have to do is to switch and open up a plugin. For instance, we'll open up the skate on the kick and come up here to the uh, auto enable part of the plugin window. And here's a list of all of the parameters that can be automated. We're just going to click on the first one, hold the shift key down, and click the last one to select them all. And then we can add that to the list. Now, that's a lot of steps. Right. And so there are actually some easier ways to do that on the console. A quick way to arm the entire plugin is to hold down all three modifiers, Control, Option, Command, simply reach up and touch the knob in inserts mode, and now we've armed the entire expander gate there. Now, there are some times, though, that you only want to arm certain parameters, and basically you can do the exact same thing, but with individual parameters. For instance, in the dynamic area, I can hold those same three modifiers, Control, Option, Command, and just tap certain controls, and that will either turn them on or turn them off. So it's very easy to do that as well. But what happens if we want to actually arm every single plugin on every channel on the console? Is that an easy thing to do? Very easy to do. Now, previously we talked about the do to all button in the global area, and we uh, call this a one-shot mode. If you select it once, you do your do to all, and then it automatically turns it off, right? Another way to do this is when you're going to do multiple do to all moves, you can double tap it to latch that on. Okay. And... Now we're going to arm all the plugins in each row by holding that same modifier, Control, Option, Command. I could simply Control, Option, Command, touch one of the plugins in there, the whole row arms now, and that due to all is stayed latched on, and now every plugin in our entire session is armed for automation. So four or five taps, and you're done. Now the due to all button is still blinking, which is a good indicator that something is on. We can now then reach up and turn that off and continue on. 
Exactly. And so now when you look at the auto enable buttons in the channel strip master, you'll notice now that the insert button is now blinking, saying that our plugins are ready to automate as well. Excellent. In fact, we can confirm uh, by looking at our automation indicators either on our inserts and pan, our sends and pan, pan by itself, or we could say dive into our equalizers, our dynamics, and see that all those elements show the automation light is blinking. Now, in some instances, you might want to turn certain parameters off and not have those things to be automated. Uh, to do that, for instance, if we're looking at uh, pans and inserts and we didn't want to automate any of our inserts at the time, we can basically reach up and turn the auto enable button off for the inserts and you'll notice that their automation lights will go from blinking red to green. So they're basically safe. They are now safe in an automation read mode. If there is any underlying automation already printed there, it will continue to play back, but we will not be able to write in that particular pass until we actually turn the insert auto enable back on and enable that for automation. Great. So now we're ready to roll transport and in this write mode and nail in our basic starting point for this song. All right. So right now we brought the edit screen up so we can actually see all of our tracks. And a really great thing about Icon, because it's integrated with Pro Tools, is being able to see that automation data on the screen right on top of the waveforms. Now, typically, if you're just using Pro Tools, there are ways to go in and select that information from basically menu-styled selection. Instead of having to go in and go through a menu to select that particular view, we have a very easy way to do that on the console. If we hold Control and Command down and just tap a parameter, in this case a fader, you can see Tom is now selecting in and changing individual tracks to volume view with those modifiers. Easy way to do the whole console would be to add in the Option key and press a, a fader or touch a fader, and that basically selects all tracks. Now, an easy way to get back to waveform view out of this is to hold all three of those modifiers down, hit the select button, that takes us back to waveform view. Those are great tips, Gil. Let's give you even one more. If we've, uh, we've gone ahead and made the tracks a medium or a large size at this point, and one of the benefits of, of working this way where you hold down the control option command and select volume, for instance, now if I select the kick track, it's not on screen. Once I touch that track, it pops me to the first level of that track so I can see exactly where I'm working on. Once again, nice feature to have your, your recording editing software married and integrated right with your mixing console, the exactly. concept of icon. All right. So I think we're ready to roll transport here now that we've set up all the, the guidelines. And um, we're probably going to do some tweaks in real time to get our balance just right and then do a right to all for the whole song. So now we're rolling transport. We can do any final tweaks to, uh, to our mix here. And if you look on the screen, what's really cool is you actually are able to see your, what you're writing automation-wise in real time in red. And in black, you actually see what the underlying automation is at the same time. So this is a really uh, great feature, being able to have your console integrated with your software. OK, I think I'm ready to commit this to the entire song now as my, my starting point. So we're going to jump up here to the auto write to area. And I want this to go in both directions, back to the beginning, wiping out any moves I made, and to the end. So we hit auto write to all, and it nails it in place. Now when we hit stop, we actually get a dialog box that says uh, that we've actually gone ahead and written to all that we're going to basically it will affect and your undo will affect all moves. This is a safety net to let you know that you, you're sure you want to do this. When you're first using the console, that's probably a good thing to have on because it gives you just some idea of what's actually going on. But as you get more familiar and get into your workflows, you're not going to want to see that dialog box come up every single time. So there is a preference that allows you to go in and turn that dialog um, warning off, which is under automation prefs on the soft key section on page two. Turn that off, and now that dialog box won't come up and bother us anymore. Okay, once we hit stop and we exit write mode, Pro Tools, as a safety measure, allows you to automatically default to touch or latch mode. 
Here we have it set up uh, in touch. If you wanted to default to latch, that's easy to change in the mixing preferences. So that brings us to our second mode, touch mode. Touch mode essentially means that the underlying automation that you have will play back until you touch one of the touch sensitive faders or encoders. So let's go ahead and roll transport port from the first first. And uh, tweak the vocal? No, let's tweak the vocal. So let's, uh, let's actually uh, uh, go grab our vocal fader. Tom's going to cycle around to find that. Okay. And it's called lead verse. voc verse. Yep. Okay. Right here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do just some tweaks to the volume. You'll notice that the pans and the plugins that are in view have now changed color from a green to an amber or a blinking red to an amber. Tell us about amber, Gil. Well, amber is a status of automation saying that we are ready and primed to write automation, but we are not writing anything yet. It's not going to start doing anything until we actually tell it to, but it will continue to play back underlying automation at that point. Okay. So I want to see the graphic on the screen follow where I'm going to be on my fader. So control command, touch that fader, and it pops that track up to the top. So we'll now roll transport, and we're going to touch the vocal, bump a few spots up or down. When I let go, it glides back to the underlying automation. I'm going to touch, make some more changes, let go, and it glides back. Touch in, make a few more changes, let go, and it glides back to the current automation. You'll notice when I am touching, the arrow's indicating which direction I need to go to match back and be very close. Gil, let's change the preference on how long it takes for the fader to glide back. Okay, so that's called match time. That can either be done in the Pro Tools preferences, but a quick way to do it from the console is to go into your automation preferences under soft keys. And on the first page, the first choice is match time. We go into there, and now we have uh, the ability to use the jog shuttle wheel to actually change how slow or fast that match time is in basically 10 millisecond increments. How about 200 milliseconds? All right. Real fast. So let's uh, dial that back in around 200. Okay. And we'll hit play. Why don't you go ahead and uh, show how fast that'll match out? Okay. Now, while the transport's rolling, the nice thing about this particular feature doing it from the console, you can actually change this while transport's rolling. So let's actually make that about 1,500 milliseconds, so about a second and a half. And now you see it matches out at a much slower pace. Once you decide on what that value is, you can press the blinking exit button. And that will take you out, and now that's your default value you have set for match time. Okay. While we're in this mode, we can do some other automation to the encoders just to talk about how they would work. It would also be nice to see that automation at the same time, just the way we did with the volume on the screen. And it works exactly the same way. So if we switch over to, say, Sins View... And now Tom can hold down uh, the control command and touch one of the sins. It's going to jump to that particular view on just that one track. Or as we did before, you could add in the option key for a do to all and switch all tracks to that particular view just as quick. Right. Now we're going to just do a little plate reverb uh, send tweaking here. And uh, perhaps maybe one or two words you want more reverb on. You'll notice the, the knob is going to switch from amber as I touch the encoder. It blinks red. It also shows me the value that I'm, I'm at. When I let go, it matches back. It goes back to amber. So great visual indicators to uh, what you're doing there, Gil. All right, let's move on to the next automation mode, which is latch mode. So we can either pop the entire console into latch mode by option latch in the global strip here, or if we want to... Uh, Go back to touch and just do this individual channel into latch mode. We can hit the auto button and it'll cycle through the modes and you'll cycle until you get the latch button lit up. Uh, let's pop back over to volume view.
for this example. So we want our edit window to follow. Control Command, touch the volume, and now we're back into volume view. So we'll hit play, we'll roll transport, and on the, the vocal here, we're gonna wanna take over, and in the latch mode, I can touch the fader, and I'm writing, I don't have to sit and hold the fader or the knob. It'll stay writing as long as I'm rolling transport. Or I can now hit right to end or right to all to commit that level. In this case, I'd like to write it to the end of time at this level. You'll notice the, the red line continues out to the end of time. When I hit stop, the graphics update to show you the change. Now, latch mode also allows you to do an update and then match back at any point. You can match back the track simply by hitting the auto button and it will glide back based on your match time. And you can do this multiple times during while the transport's rolling. So I'm gonna go ahead now and auto match back. Again, I wanna get close to where the fader is. Now I hit the auto button and it glides back. At this point, let's switch everything into latch and talk about dealing with multiple channels and matching out. All right, so Tom's gonna switch over to everybody in latch. We'll start rolling of the transport. Start writing automation on several channels. And now, uh, if we decided we wanted to match out everything, there is a global button in the soft keys mode under the automation section called auto match. And this is a global auto match and that when we press it, it'll match out all channels and all parameters. So everything on the console is now matched out and back uh, reading automation and no longer writing. So that auto match light only lights up when a change has been made in, in the latch mode. That's correct. Let's show some different scenarios with latch mode of matching out. Okay. So we're gonna roll transport again. We're gonna touch in on those same faders and uh, we'll also add in uh, some pan maneuvers as well. So now you can see we're writing on both volume and pan. And let's just say, for instance, we wanted to match out only the volumes, Gil. Okay. What would be a good way to do that? Well, the easiest way is uh, hold the command key down and press the volume auto match button in the channel strip master, and that will just match out the volumes across the entire console and our pans are still writing. And you can see that also by the pan light is blinking and auto enables. Okay, and if we want to uh, match out everything that's left, we can now just hit the auto match button. Uh, we'll also touch in and show you another scenario that uh, if you were to, instead of auto matching, if you wanted to hard jump out, uh, you can turn off volume or pan here, or you can just stop the transport and the faders or the pans will jump back at that point. One more scenario is let's go ahead and put some of the faders back into right latch and some of the pans. Okay. And let's say we wanted to take just that verse lead or the uh, chorus lead vocal out of latch mode on just the volume. So if we hold down the command key modifier and hit the auto button on that channel, it will only match out that volume on that channel. Same thing can happen with any of the other parameters by holding down the command key and pressing down the pan on the double. It matches out just the pan of the double and so on the next track. So this is a way to easily go in and get very microscopic on what you want to match out. Very uh, easy to get very detailed in this. Excellent. Uh, latch mode, extremely powerful, especially with all those uh, details we showed there. Our next mode that we're gonna cover is a hybrid mode of both latch and touch, and it's very popular in the post world. The post world, people are doing a lot of things simultaneously. They're grabbing for the knobs for sends and pans, and they're wanting to just quick update what's on the faders. So this mode is called latch touch. So I'm gonna hold the option key and toggle through into that mode. So you can either do it by holding the touch latch together or you'll go through all the modes, which are right, touch, latch, and then touch latch pops up. So essentially what this means is all the knobs are in a separate mode, latch mode, 
all the faders are in a separate mode touch mode. So while rolling, you can go up and grab several pans. Those latch in, they'll continue to blink. And now grab some faders, make some updates, and when you let go, the faders go ahead and match out. They're no longer writing automation, but the pans continue to write automation until they're either auto matched out or we do a hard match out by hitting stop. Excellent. That's as simple as touch latch is.